No matter your age, your plan for retirement can start today. From the News Channel 5 Network, this is the Retirement Report. Good morning. Welcome to the Retirement Report. I'm Hank Parrott, your host. All right, last week I talked about derivatives. I got into some books from Michael Lewis. Uh, you may recall, and I'm going to jump into the show a little differently today to get everything in on this second part, or if you will. One of them is called Boomerang. This talked about the financial crisis that we went through. Uh, in for many still going through to some degree uh, back in in uh, 08 this then another book he wrote uh, the big short and this talked a lot about some of the derivatives and uh, collateralized debt obligations some of the things that were out there that led up to this and how this created a, a true financial crisis with regard to the banks and and how that worked and then his most recent book is flash boys and in this book he talks basically about some of the things that have happened since then uh, what we're going to be surprised to find for instance is derivatives are on the rise again Another part of that is that there are new things out there that Wall Street has come up with as a way to try to uh, basically make themselves uh, uh, less transparent, let's say, more opaque. It's a more, more difficult to see some of the ways the money moves around in Wall Street. And here's one of the biggest concerns is measuring of risk. You know, when we talked about it last week, one of the things that I talked to you about was collateralized debt obligations. Basically, this was where, let's say you go out and you borrow money from the bank for a mortgage, okay? That's a pretty straightforward uh, transaction. I'm going to borrow the money from the bank. We have a contract. Uh, I'm going to pay them. Uh, to their, we're gonna, they're going to hold the deed or have a, a, a lien on the, on the house, if you will, in, the, in a mortgage deed. Uh, I pay them so much a month at the end of the specified term at that, that interest rate. Uh, I then own the home. It's mine free and clear. They give me a release and we're done. Okay, pretty easy on that one. Now here's the other part. Now let's say that uh, we want to collateral, we want to securitize rather uh, something like that. So we take that debt of those mortgages and we take a, a bunch of those mortgages and we package them together and we create and we securitize and we create a bond and these, this is a mortgage backed uh, bond in this situation. And you have many types of bonds and this is just ways of borrowers uh, or you know lending for people to borrow money basically for you to lend them your money at some type of interest rate or uh, expected rate of return in the sense of a mutual fund uh, where you're then at the end of the period uh, let's start with that straightforward bond again okay now we've, we've created a bond a mortgage-backed bond uh, what we want then is on this bond this is uh, this could be a, a, a more straightforward even uh, transaction maybe I loan money to a company I take out a bond through uh, General Motors or through a uh, uh, AT&T or any number of companies that issue bonds and I take out this bond I basically am loaning them the money for a specified period of time at a specified interest rate that I'm gonna get paid every six months some interest and at the end of whatever the period of that bond is I get my money back all right and this is what a lot of people are doing today as a way to try to re receive higher returns so I'm gonna break this down into some of the risks that are, are a part of uh, investing in the market, what kind of concerns you should have, and how you can help minimize those risks by the way in which you invest, and then some other strategies as well. See, all of this is really about, when we're talking about the derivatives and the credit default swaps and all the different things that happened back during the, uh, the period of 2007 and 8. And, and actually in 06 and, and 5 even leading up to it in those in that period of time a lot of people uh, were basically defaulting uh, or excuse me creating situations in which people would default if you will in the types of loans that were being done because the lenders were able to basically get the risk off of their books through this securitization of debt now that's nothing new as far as securitization of debt it's the way in which it happened and the way that they then further took these securities and then created these CDOs, these collateralized debt obligations, and were able to hide some of the risks, make them look safer as investments than they actually were. And there was a lot of reasons for this uh, that I had talked about in those previous shows, and you can find out more about in these books as well. What I want you to get under this, out of this more than anything is understanding that there is a certain lack of transparency in Wall Street, and the key is how do you 
recognize then how to invest in such a way that you can have transparent investments. And one of the ways is to kind of keep it simple, right? If I'm going to have bonds, let me have pretty much straightforward bonds. Let me not have a basket of things that are put together in such a way that I don't even know what the holdings are. And that's what CDOs did. I didn't know what the junk ones were from the, the AAA. They were all mixed together and it was very difficult then to, re to uh, measure that risk. That kind of thing, the growth of, in fact, this is one of the things to show that this kind of risk is still out there. And the reason it's important to understand that there's risk out there in the markets in such a way or that we could go through another financial crisis potentially is that there are, again, ways to position yourself. So I'm going to show you some strategies this morning and show you historically how they weathered these same periods over both good periods and bad periods, how well they held up, so that you know that if you invest, you can have that peace of mind of knowing that you're invested properly and you're not investing in such a way that you're jumping in and out of your particular investments trying to time the market. Research and studies shows us that doesn't work. It's a, it's, it's a great way to, in fact, get a horrible return on your money, probably not stay up with inflation. Uh, Dalbar, in fact, in a recent uh, study, which they do each year when they release their reports, they show that the average investor gets less than one half of what the market return would be over given 10, 15, 20-year periods or even five-year periods. And the reason for that is some of the things I just talked about as far as this, this uh, nervousness about whether they're invested properly or whether they should be in the market or not at given times. So first off on the risk side, the, there are 700 trillion, over 10 times the world's gross domestic, domestic product, currently trading in derivatives. All right. So it's actually increased over the period of time uh, since the financial crisis. We've got 17 trillion gross domestic pro 17 trillion, excuse me, in derivatives uh, re relative to the gross domestic product here in the United States. 18 trillion in Europe, 6 trillion in Japan. China is currently a seven trillion. These are the GDPs of these countries. The total then for the world's GDP is 70 trillion. And as I said, 700 trillion, 10 times that amount is out there in derivatives being traded. And again, the issue is that transparency. So if we look at, think of, of gross domestic product as kind of like almost like income, right? That you've got, that we as a country have. What we're, the total money we're making and it's moving in the system. Uh, and all that money is not held by the institutions, of course, who are making these bets, meaning they're over leveraging again. And we're gonna, you know, I talked about that before, and we're gonna talk about uh, basically how you can protect yourself. So if there's another financial crisis, when we have banks, and this was a recent article in Forbes that got into this, that are making these huge bets in terms of what their, uh, relative to their, uh, the amount of money that they have in assets. So as an example, uh, the 10 biggest banks in the world are in Europe. Deutsche Bank in Germany has more than 77 trillion of derivatives. Okay, so that's more than, again, the gross domestic product of the whole world. And they've got that and the derivatives that they're betting on uh, themselves. Goldman Sachs has 106 billion in assets. All right, think of this. 106 billion in assets and over 48 trillion of derivative exposure. And again, how well is that risk being measured? A very small percentage, 1% maybe, of default in their bankrupt. They've lost, they, they, the losses would outweigh their total assets. Bank of America has 1.4 trillion of assets and almost $39 trillion of derivatives. Citibank's 1.3 trillion, 62 trillion in derivatives. And finally, JP Morgan Chase, 1.9 trillion in assets with over 70 trillion of derivatives. And of course, we can remember it wasn't but uh, just a couple of years ago that they had such huge losses of about 2 trillion uh, in that, uh, in what they call the well, well uh, case, uh, the trader in, in London. So, <clears throat> what does all this mean again? We're going to break it down for you. When we come back from the break, I'm going to get into, basically I want you to understand the risks that's out there, but then I'm going to show you how you can, in fact, position yourself to be able to weather that and, in fact, even thrive in such an environment. So join us here. We're going to be right back on the Retirement Report.